I can honestly say that upcoming Smash Bros. defined my junior year at high school. I'd wake up in the morning, look at my phone, and see Sakurai's pick of the day on Miiverse. I associated every major holiday during this time with the newcomer that was revealed around me. My greatest Christmas gift was Rosalina. Little Mac was my Valentine. Greninja got me through spring cleaning. I got my dream character Pac-Man for my birthday. And Captain Falcon helped me celebrate the independence of my country. I've been following it ever since the first trailer back in June 2013 and still continues to this day. I feel like since I've dedicated so much time to this unreleased game, it would only be fitting to have my first countdown revolve around this game series. But what is there to talk about that hasn't already been said? Characters, stages, items, music, event matches. Actually, no one has really talked about those. Those various crazy situations the game puts you in. I mean seriously. Some of these get ridiculous. So much so that I just want to turn off my Wii and smash it instead from the frustration. It's almost like the game director enjoys messing with his or her fans. Oh, he must have had fun making these. Anyway, here are the top 10 Smash Bros event matches that I found to be cheap. An increasing order of frustration. No rules, really, only that they have to have personally frustrated me. Whether it is due to the ridiculous conditions one has to meet to beat it, or the extreme disadvantage one starts at. Or a combination of both. Also, no co-op events from Brawl, since the only friend who'd be able to play with me doesn't really know much about the game, so he'd probably be more of a burden in getting through all the events. Don't tell him I said that. Anyways, let's get on with the list. This first one actually isn't that hard gameplay wise. It's basically kill all the weak clones. Nothing new, nothing too rough. Difficulty stems from Sonic's lack of variety in his palette swaps. Just a swapped out colors for his bracelets and shoes, and a slightly different shade of blue. Things impossible to see in the heat of battle. This makes Sonic Boom and Chaotic Rumble are basically the same exact character, yourself included, where it is easy to get lost in the fray and be KO'd by the hedgehog you thought you were. All you have to differentiate yourself is the indicator above your head, which can be tough to keep track of, especially on smaller TVs. All in all, while this event isn't too much of an issue, it can cause some unneeded headache from focusing in on small moving objects. Thank Mobius that Sonic is actually getting at least one dramatically different costume change. Let's hope he gets a couple more like his Sonic Adventure 2 gear or his Nathan Drake bandana. The Pokeball is one of the funnest Smash Bros items to use. You never know if the creature inside will ensure your victory, lob around uselessly, or somehow screw you over even more. Or if the Pokemon inside the ball could almost perfectly ensure your victory. That's the concept of the new Smash's Master Ball, but this was incepted all the way back in Melee, in the event Legendary Pokemon. Here, every Pokeball you throw will almost always contain a Legendary, and if not, a Wobbuffet. Which is still not too shabby if you have a chain of legendary Pokemon going. The real problem is Jigglypuff, who with her fast speed, and the fact that she's not being ganged up by a bunch of giant wireframes, has the much greater advantage in getting to the Pokeballs before you. And this is where the hell starts. Before you know it, legendary attacks are coming to you at every conceivable direction, and there is very little you can do about it until either you get KO'd or J Puff gets an unlucky chain of wob effects. It gets annoying to say the least, but all the frustration ends up being worth it when you are the one commanding the legendary Pokemon. That pink ball of evil is gonna regret ever touching my balls.
This is actually a sequel to a pretty cool event from Melee called Gargantuans, where you play as a huge Bowzilla fighting against King Donkey Kong atop skyscrapers. This event adds Charizard to the fray, but you don't play as any of the Grand Beasts. Instead, you play as the Puny Rob, tasked with taking all three out. As you'd imagine, it's not easy. Pretty much any direct hit from these guys will send you flying, and most of the time, dying. All you can do is hide in a small corner of the stage, slowly bringing up the damage of the monsters, or hoping they will be taken out from the randomly spawning Chimera or Friendly Fire. It's doable, but very redundant, very fast. Let's hope the third entry in the event series brings it back to the beasts exclusively, while playing as a certain space pirate. I didn't even realize I made this number 7 when I first made this list. Anyway, now for the prequel for a pretty awesome event in Brawl, Darklink Duel, which I think actually makes the inclusion of the stamina mode a worthwhile inclusion, emulating the 10th final battle from Zelda 2. Seven years on the other hand is basically someone traveling back through time and punching their past child self for doing something stupid. You play as a stupid child. Link is obviously a stronger version of young Link, so any attempt to attack him head on will probably end with being curb stomped. I find the best strategy is to try to outsmart the AI by jumping along the bottom of the stage. It eventually worked for me, after 17 tries. This is the first of two ties on this list. They can pretty much be summed up in the same sentence. Gimmickly, Kaon Yoshi's on a flying pirate ship. In the pirate airship, you have to defeat two Yoshi's during a very short time frame when the pirate ship stage is thrown in the air by a tornado. If you KO them at any other time, they respawn with no damage. Obviously, trying to hold back leads to the Yoshi's hitting you with all they have with no fear of repercussions. On the other hand, constantly attacking them can lead to a premature KO, and your controller ending up in the TV screen. It's a no-win situation! It basically depends on the right item at the right time to win. In Yoshi's Rainbow, you can KO the Yoshis whenever you want, but you have to do in a specific color order, otherwise you fail. If any of the colored Yoshis die at the wrong time, you get an immediate failure. Even if the reason they died was the AI being suicidal. Oh, and you have to do it before the Rainbow Cruise stage loops, by the way. So slow and steady isn't an option. Hope you didn't replace your cracked TV yet. for the only other tie on this list. Both deal with the theme of racing, and both have really badass titles and or descriptions. In the epically named Lethal Marathon, you play as the epic Captain Falcon. Your objective? Complete the big blue level for Melee's adventure mode. The catch? Everything is on fast forward. Have you ever tried playing a game on an emulator on fast forward? It's not easy. And just like every other entry on this list, this event isn't easy either. If you don't get off the track at the right time, you'll be flattened by the F-Zero machines, but if you stop to avoid the cars too much, you'll run out of time. It's very nerve-wracking to find just the right balance between stopping and running, plus the jumps towards the ends are very intense with the sped up gravity. The second half of this entry has one of the most badass descriptions in all of Smash Bros. I want to climb a waterfall at high speeds. Why? Because it's there. Super Waterfall Climb has you playing as Zelda, who wants to be a badass and speed run up a waterfall. I like her confidence, 
but I think she should stand back for a moment and think about her limits. Specifically, her floaty jump physics, which make it hard to stay ahead of the screen, because it will be a mile ahead of you by the time you land. And the teleport doesn't make it any easier either, as there is one part of the stage that gets me stuck every time I teleport to it. The real kicker of this event is that Sheik would obviously make this event much easier, but the fast moving screen makes it impossible to transform. The ice climbers are there too, but they don't really affect anything. You thought those two Yoshi events had annoying gimmicks? Wait until you see this. You play as Kirby, and your goal is to KO three Warriors, and you can only defeat them with the Dragoon item. Now obviously, with Wario's fast speed and great power, getting and holding on to all three Dragoon pieces is going to be a huge pain in the fart center. You'll probably end up giving it all you have to knock a Dragoon piece from one of the Warriors, only to have the same Wario poke you slightly and immediately take his piece back. And you better hope that when you finally build a Dragoon that you can KO all three Warriors at once, otherwise you have to go through all this hell again. This event does something seemingly impossible. It puts an escort mission, ready for this, into a fighting game. In this event, you play as Maud, and you need to defend an inactive Zelda from two Ganondorfs while she transforms into Sheik. Gee, Zelda, you didn't have to hold back that much. Anyway, even though Ganondorf is the worst Smash character by far, two Ganondorfs are still a handful to deal with. It's very easy to lose track of Zelda while fighting one of the Ganons, and have it KO'd by a really slow moving leg attack. Did I mention that these Ganons have two lives while you and Zelda only have one? Well, this could have been worse. You could have been stuck playing as Ganondorf while being outnumbered, right? 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 This is the first event that I actually got stuck on. These other events? I was eventually able to beat them after giving some hard sweat and blood. But this one? I need to take a long break from this, before getting the composer to finally get back to it, and eventually overcome it. This event has you playing as Ganondorf, who like I said, is the worst character in the game. Sure, he is powerful but the slowness makes it impossible to get a direct hit on anyone. It's frustrating just to fight against one character as Ganon, let alone three. You are stuck fighting Link, Zelda, and Pit in this event. It is impossible to fight them directly. Beating this event involves the ultimate patience. You have to wait for just the right time to get some damage in, otherwise you get a Triforce combo of doom. The two stocks you get don't even really help in the slightest, it only delays the inevitable. This event broke me. I played it over a hundred times, and I am still not able to beat it. <laughs> Seems simple at first, but that's how it gets you in. You just have to defeat five characters as Ness. Easy enough, right? But it will soon crush your dreams. You start out fighting Samus, who you defeat without a second thought. Same goes for Kirby. But once you get to Fox, things start to get a little hairy. No pun intended. He's pretty tough to defeat. But that becomes cakewalk when you discover that his AI glitches out when you're dealing with the pits on four side. This gives you hope. A 
as you plan to abuse this glitch to easily steamroll through the rest of the opponents. But then the screen goes black, and you awaken Battlefield. But then it hits you. Literally. And you get sent flying by the captain himself. And you spend the next half hour trying to get past Captain Falcon, trying to bear the barrage of defeat that you are facing. Ecstasy hits you when you finally KO Captain Falcon. But then you soon realize that Captain Falcon was a demon. And when you take out the Captain N, you get the devil himself. <laughs> Falco is a bastard. The only thing about this event that gives me comfort is that I know there will never be a sequel to this. I mean, there haven't been any new characters added that can be classified as space travelers, right? What? What is that? Huh? No, 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 no! Uh, April Fools, I guess. Meh. Just kind of threw this together.